Hi, my name is Albert Dunford, and in this tutorial video, we are going to get started with the F28379D uh, launchpad. Uh, we are going to get some code uh, generated from PSIM uh, and get some PWMs working. We're also going to connect over the serial communication interface to um, connect to the DSP itself. Um, so just a basic getting going with this processor and hopefully uh, help you uh, understand how our code generation works and how you can start moving forward with uh, some more advanced projects. Okay, so to get started, uh, the first thing we're going to do in PSIM is uh, we can go to the example circuits. So if you go to examples, for example, SIM coder, F2837X target, and we can just open up um, basically the, the first one that we see here, which is basically a, a simple uh, PWM uh, generation circuit. Uh, and if we simulate this, we can see that we're just generating a 90% uh, uh, duty cycle. Zoom in a couple cycles there. Uh, so that's all we're going to do uh, with this. The PWM will be running at 200 kilohertz, and it's going to be generated on PWM timer one. Now, the most important thing, I can't stress this enough. TI, I'm sorry, I'm going to make fun of Texas Instruments for a second here. The clock on this is rated at 10 megahertz. So the launch pad clocks are 10 megahertz, but all of the example code and example projects assume have a default of 20 megahertz. Okay, so we need to actually change the clock setting. So if and and PSM assumes the default clock setting, which is 20 megahertz. So we're going to need to go in and change the clock. Okay, so the first thing to do with these, if you're using a launch pad, and this goes for all the launch pads with these new Delphino processors, is we need to change the clock. So to do that, SimCoder F237X, browse down to the uh, DSP clock element, place that, double click, and we can see that the uh, default uh, external clocks is, is 10 mega, is 20, we need that to be 10. I can't stress this enough. If you don't do this, you'll notice that these are all going to operate at half speed. So the launch pad XLs have a 10 megahertz external clock, you need to change it. So this is what you need to do, okay? And then if you're building one of these simulations from scratch, you'd go into here and you would make sure that this CPU version matches what you're doing with. There are other uh, launch pads with different uh, processor variants. Uh, you need to make sure that you're using the right one. So you see, I'm using the F28379D. So I need to go in here and I need to change that to F28379D. And this is the 337 pin version, okay? Those are the two changes we need to do to be compatible with this processor. Okay, so I'll hit save, and then I'm just going to go simulate and generate code. And there's our code, our timestamp, July 3rd, 2019. Um, let's import this project into Code Composer Studio. So we can just open that co generated code folder. I'm doing that just to simply help me pick up this path. So this is my the default install path for version 12. And um, and then it's just in this folder here, we need this .pjt file. So we'll go into uh, Code Composer Studio. Uh, we'll go Project, Import Legacy, paste that uh, in there, hit Browse, pick up, pick up that .pjt, next, finish. There's going to be some things you need to deal with. So Next up is to go in here, right click, go to the properties, and we need to uncheck the XD, XDAIS. If you're using a, uh, the latest ver later versions of, of Code Composer Studio, do not include this XDAIS library anymore. We, because um, <clears throat> we can generate code that's compatible to version 3.3, the link or the header file points to it. So you just need to uncheck that, hit apply and close. And you're almost ready to go. Next step, we need to plug this in. <clears throat> Use a USB cable and just simply plug it in. You should start seeing some lights blinking and flittering around. And then we need to make sure that our target configuration is assigned properly. So you can see I've got one here already. 
So target configurations, this is critical. Um, we need to go in here and we need to check. So this has an onboard XDS100 version 2, and the processor is the 28379D, and we can actually test that connection and make sure that it's working properly. So we should be able to cruise down here, and we should see the JTAG DR integrity scan test has succeeded. If you don't see this, there's something wrong. You need to, there's only two things to, to the XDS100 version 2 and the right processor, and you should be good. If that doesn't work for you, then there's something else. Maybe the processor doesn't match or your USB cable's not good. And then we can right click that and set it as default, or you can link it to the project file that you want to run with. But this needs to be in bold. And if you come back over here, our active project, this is the one we want to. So this is the one that we just imported. And we can see that that is the one with the. Um, so here's the .c file we're going to run with. But um, PSIM, uh, these are all the files that PSIM has generated and exported for us. So these are all these files in this folder here. So lots going on that gets generated, not just a .c file, but linker files and library files, et cetera. Um, so back in CCS, all we have to do now is click uh, this button, which is going to debug it. Uh, this is a dual core processor. We can choose to put it, um, we need to put it on CPU 1, uh, but we could put it on both if we want to, or just leave one on check, and we click OK. And uh, essentially, we are off to the races. OK, so while that's compiling, um, I've got the data sheet for the uh, launch XL here. And we're going to probe the, the pin uh, with the, uh, we're going to probe that output pin. OK. so. This is the schematic for the uh, Launch XL. We'll link to the download for this in the description. But uh, so this is the Texas Instruments document. So we're going to hopefully see uh, a 90% duty cycle waveform on GPIO 0 and 1, PWM timers 1A and 1B. How do I know it's going to be those physical pins 1A and 1B? And if we come back to PSIM, if we double click there, let me. Rearranges on the same screen here. We can see PWM1, GPO0 and 1, GPO0 and 1, 1A, 1B, use PWM1A and B. So we should see these pop up there. Okay, so that's if we had changed this to timer two, we should see on uh, on these two pins. So jumper four, uh, pins 10 and 9 is the ones we care about. Okay, so back over here. OK, so I've got my PicoScope display here. Let's just turn on both channels. Uh, and I'll, we'll, I'll adjust that in a moment. So this is my PicoScope. So this is just a little USB-based oscilloscope. Um, we've got a decent sampling rate. 100 megahertz um, is the bandwidth here. The resolution isn't uh, the, this isn't one of the higher one, end ones, but we'll be able to pick up those signals quite nicely. Um, and then we also need to. Uh, start so this starts in a pause state so I'm just gonna grab uh, jumper 4 pin 10 jumper 4 is the one over here there's a very small text there I'm just gonna whoop, just gonna attach the probe okay so that's on let's start this going we see some PWMs there let's uh, set up the trigger uh, let's change the scale here. Whoops, let's go down to say two microseconds. Okay, perfect. And then on the other pin, we should see some dead time. Perf uh, some the complement with, with dead time. So everything looks pretty good. So we'll leave that clicking along there. And we can come back into CCS here. And we can now pause and stop. And we can see that those signals have, have now gone away. Here we are back in PSIM now. So let's change this so we can change this uh, duty cycle uh, value on the fly. And to do that, I am going to come back and we're going to do that over the SCI, the serial communication interface. So this is off of, uh, we get to choose the, the send receive pair that we're going to use. We'll set that up in a moment. Um, but then we're going to uh, disable this 0 0.9 source and we're going to use an SCI input now. So the SCI input, we'll put that back at uh, 0.9. 
and we're going to uh, also set this up so that we're at, uh, so that we'll give it a name. So this is going to be duty cycle. So we need to be able to connect to the SCI. So I had set this up to be GPOs 28 and 29. I We didn't check to make sure that was the right pins off of the data sheet. So let's go back to the data sheet and check the pins we need. So on this page, uh, which is showing the XDS100 connection to the USB, we can look to see what the SCI send receive pair is. And we see that's actually GPIO 43 and 42. So if we come back over here, we've got it set to 28 and 29. So that's the wrong set. So we need to come back to 43 and 42. That's the set we need. So um, this, we won't try and connect. That's not going to be the right connection. So we'll just, and we'll regenerate with the right pins now. So simulate. Generate code, and we will. Um, we can see that that see there's it's been changed. There's the new time step 1208, and we'll just debug it again. Okay, that's loaded in now. We're running it to the new code now, so we'll move that out of the way. We'll bring the SCI back over, and we will connect. And we should see there's our duty cycle control variable is right there. And if we come back over here with these two guys in the same screen, we can now change this duty cycle. So there's 0.5. And we can see this now shift to 0 0.5, 0 0.2, and shift to 0.2. OK, so that's basically um, the, the gist of things. So if we. Uh, want to do other more advanced things with uh, the code generation. Again, there is going to be an example circuit that will help you uh, get started with that sort of thing. So file, open examples, and then and cruise down to SimCoder, 37x target, and then we can see there's uh, other PWM methods. So we can get into phase shifting here. Uh, as you saw in here, there was um, with the X bar, or you know, there's ADC uh, triggering you can set up. CAN bus communication examples should be here. External compare to compare. Um, all sorts of all sorts of more advanced um, simulations or code generation things are available for you to go with, and uh, and you can even get into ones where. So here's an example of a closed loop uh, DQ control inverter. Uh, and as I said, there's, there's even some motor drive examples in here as well. So that was in SimCoder. And then the target, are, these are all the examples built for this particular target. And then there's also lots of examples for the other targets that we support and also the PE Expert 4. OK, so that's it for this tutorial video. Uh, do let us know if you have questions, um, either in the comments or in our forum. And uh, look for more tutorial videos on the subject. Thank you so much for watching. Bye now.